Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hearthstone at the Trading Post. I am your host, like usual, Greg, also known as Stoos, and we are going to wander back into the soon-to-be obsolete solo adventures. And today we're going to try our luck against the second boss of the Arachnid Quarter, Grand Widow Fairlina. We'll face the pesky Lady of the Spiders today with the mighty druid Malfurion Stormrage and the deck titled The Gambler. The deck is titled as such because you're putting all of your chips down on one combination of cards right at the beginning of the game, as we will see in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at our opponent, Grand Widow Fairlina. Right off the bat, you'll notice a health disadvantage because, you know, this is a heroic and it's not supposed to be easy. Anyway, Fairlina has 45 health to your 30, and this isn't terribly important to our strategy, but it's something worth noting. Next, we'll take a look at the Grand Widow's hero power, Reign of Fire which reads, fire a missile for each card in your opponent's hand. In strictly functional wording, Reign of Fire costs 1 mana and deals 1 damage to a random enemy for each card in your hand. What that means for us facing Grand Widow Fairlina is that we are rewarded for having as small a hand as possible and are punished for playing low health minions. Now we'll take a look at the Grand Widow's special cards. First up is the Death Charger, a 1 cost, undead horse with 2 attack, 3 health, charge, and a death rattle that deals 3 damage to the possessing hero. Nothing especially menacing, and it is a bit of a high risk, high reward card for Fairlina. It can be tricky to clear from the board early on and is tough enough to hold its own mid game and can be a thorn in your side if left unchecked. Next comes the Necro Knight, a 4 cost minion with 5 attack, 6 health, and a death rattle that destroys the minions on both sides of the Necro Knight. Again, this is a high risk, high reward card for the boss, as its power to cost comparison is very impressive. However, with its death rattle, it gives the player the ability to quickly clear the board by potentially getting 3 minion kills for the price of 1. Finally comes the staple card of Fairlina's deck, the Warshipper. This card is a 3 cost minion with 2 attack and 4 health and boasts an effect that gives Fairlina plus 3 attack on her turn. In effect, one of these suckers equips an unbreakable 3 attack weapon to the boss until the minion is killed, but a key part about this effect is that it stacks for each warshipper on the board. 2 warshippers means Fairlina hits for 6, 3 warshippers ups it to 9, and so on up to a potential of plus 15 damage if Fairlina is allowed to board all 5 copies of her warshipper at the same time. What that means for us is that in nearly every situation, Warshipper should be your first priority when clearing Fairlina's minions. Now that we understand our opponent, let's jump back into the fight. As I said, this deck is called the Gambler because you're gambling your entire game on the starting hand. The cards we're looking for are Innervate and Astral Communion. Nothing else we draw matters, we only want those. So we'll send back Boom, Chromagus, and Cold Light Oracle immediately without thinking twice. And would you look at that, we're rewarded right away with one of our key cards, Astral Communion. So we're off to a good start here, especially now that we've drawn an Innervate here on turn 1. This is nearly a perfect setup for us. And if the Astral Communion and mass quantities of legendary minions that have been revealed in my deck so far haven't given it away already, let me explain. This deck's whole strategy is to get to 10 mana immediately, and then proceed to spend the rest of the game top decking, hoping to get powerful and legendary minions with each draw. This strategy negates the Grand Widow's hero power by emptying your hand, and allows you to begin to build an unbalanced board with powerful minions nearly immediately. This strategy can come with some saddening collateral damage. It's a tragedy to see Kel'Thuzad, Nefarian, and Antique Healbot get discarded like that, but it's well worth it for the end result. And I have a nasty tendency to forget that you get 10 full mana crystals from Astral Community. So if you're a smarter player than me, you'll hit your hero power before ending your turn here. But as you'll see, there's often plenty of room for error if you get your key cards early. And our luck turns downward a little bit as we draw our second Astral Communion. That is one of the few cards I have in the deck twice, and it's only to increase its draw chance. Once it's played, it's not terribly useful, but we'll go ahead and play it for the sake of clearing out our hand and to get some excess mana, which turns into a wild growth, again useless now, and more excess mana, which becomes a lovely Ancient of War, which we are now too poor to play. So we can't begin taking the board on turn two, but we are set up to put out a powerful seven cost card very early on turn three. And it might look like we're headed for certain defeat at this point, facing a health score of 45 to 13, but with this deck you need to stay confident and keep on keeping on. With a little bit of draw luck we'll have massive board superiority soon and Fairlina will be on her heels. The North Sea Kraken we drew can't clear the board with its battle cry, so we'll continue with our Ancient of War from last turn instead. This also leaves us with a little mana left over to hit our hero power again and gain an armor and deal a little bit of damage to the boss. So after Fairlina makes her rounds, we have a nasty situation. Two of those high priority warshippers are on the board, effectively giving the Grand Widow a 6 attack weapon. Fortunately we get a stroke of draw luck in the form of a one cost claw. This will allow us to put together a nice little combo that will clear Fairlina's board, eliminate her hero attack, 
and leave us in control of the board as a whole. And this does continue to leave us in a bit of a pickle health-wise, but don't be afraid to take damage. It doesn't matter who takes the fastest damage, it only matters who takes the last damage. And it looks like our flip-flopping luck is going to continue for us as we draw another useless card. This time, Innervate. There are two sides to the coin on this play. You can either play Innervate for the sake of emptying your hand to negate Reign of Fire, or you can hold onto it just in case you wind up needing an extra two mana to make a multi-card play on a future turn. Both options have benefits, but I'm usually willing to risk the one damage Reign of Fire in favor of a more powerful future turn, especially when neither my hero nor my board minions are in danger of being killed from a single point of damage. But following another go from the Grand Widow, I may have to change my tune. At 5 health, I'm getting uncomfortably low on life, and the threat of any damage from Reign of Fire is a little intimidating. But we have an opportunity to get an extra card by killing off the Dancing Swords, and that pays off big time! One of the reasons not to panic has arrived! It's everyone's favorite annoyance card, Reno Jackson. Knowing that this deck can be prone to taking heavy damage early, we packed him away for a rainy day just like this. And now we have a second win to help us try and finish off the scary spider lady across the table. So in addition to high-powered, high-cost cards, this deck has a few ways to heal your hero back up, as well as several ways to get extra card draws to help diminish the card advantage Fairlina gains when the player discards their entire hand early on. Cards like Loot Hoarder and Novice Engineer can be extremely valuable, especially when you draw cards with little to no immediate benefit to start your turn. In this instance, Loot Hoarder not only cleared an enemy minion from the board, its second chance draw yielded a powerful Iron Bark Protector, a much more viable play on this turn than the brand Bronzebeard I initially drew. Because I was able to play Iron Bark Protector, I'm left free to attack Fairlina's face without fear, knowing that the likelihood of significant damage penetrating its taunt is incredibly low. And it certainly doesn't hurt that Fairlina isn't shy about playing her dancing swords. The more cards for me right now, the better. So the Iron Bark Protector held strong as expected, and Fairlina left us with an extra card draw available on the board. I'm not wild about the idea of putting Chromagus out there just yet. I already have more cards in my hand than I really want, and Chromagus will just add to that. So instead, I think I'll lead off my turn by trading Reno for whatever's on the top of my deck. <laughs> you did well today, Reno. Your contributions will not be forgotten. And that little trade gives us Wrath and another opportunity to draw a card, which chains into another draw with Novice Engineer. But now we finally have a chance to take advantage of Brand Bronzebeard's effect. So we'll drop him out, followed by Novice Engineer, and see if we can pull out a powerful minion to put this game to rest. Uh, I'm not sure if Lothab really fits that description, but it does hit the mana cost just right to allow that Innervate we've been saving to pay off for us. Plus, I can't pass up the opportunity to add 5 more damage to my side of the board when there's all that blank table space staring back at me. So now the tables seem to have turned and Fairlina is likely only moments away from her demise. I clearly have lethal damage out there on the board, but since it's a game against a program and not a person, I'll allow myself to have a little bit of fun at the expense of proper manners and etiquette. We'll just go ahead and play the board control game a little longer and chip a little more health off Fairlina as we go. This is where the game really starts to get fun, because at this point, you can just screw around with all your fun, powerful cards and there's nothing that the boss can do about it. She can't even end her own misery by hitting concede. Her turns are just a formality now. No matter what she does, I should have this game in the bag. And I think I'll just try to toy with her a little longer because you don't get these opportunities playing online. And while she can't end the game on her terms, I like to imagine that ending a turn with 4 unused mana is bot speak for I give up. Back on our side, we'll continue to have a little fun because who can pass up the opportunity to have Dr. Boom double summon his boombox? I think this will be the end of my playtime though. I'll just go ahead and finish her off on the next turn. But right now, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. Do you have another strategy for tackling Fairlina? Or is there another heroic boss you want to see us go toe-to-toe -to -toe with? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all these videos and everything coming out of the trading post. Also, while you're down there clicking on things, go ahead and click open the description box to find all the different ways to get in contact with us here at the trading post. One last time, I'm Greg. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on Wednesday.